Welcome back, humans! It's Wednesday, and I'm back with another middle-of-the-week vent session. And man, I'm fucking hyped about today. I don't know about you guys. But before I get going, I would love it uh, if you guys could uh, smash that like button, hit me with a subscription, and uh, turn on that notification button so you never miss an episode. I drop one every Wednesday and Saturday. And uh, some changes coming this spring, possibly a new studio. Excited about that, so look out for that. A little bit upgrade from the curtains behind me. <laughs> but like I said, I'm a little excited about it. Um, you know, we got a new prez. Uh, it, it was the inauguration today. I didn't get to catch much of it. Um, I was at work and um, kind of wasn't around the TV much. You know what I'm saying? We were at lunchtime. There was one in like the break room area, but I didn't really get to see much. And then, um, so that was about it, man. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, time to move in the new guy. You know what I'm saying? And the VP. But um, hopefully, like, during this term and all this crap with, like, all the stuff that was going on, like, it got ugly, man. You know, 20, 20, uh, you know, hmm, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we don't even have to say that name anymore. Because if you say it, it's probably, like, like, uh, like seven years bad luck, you know what I'm saying? It's like breaking a mirror. Like, it's, that, it's probably got that kind of ties. Like, that bad shit happens if you say 20, hmm. You know what I'm saying? Let's just, like, forget about it. Like, leave it like Voldemort from Harry Potter. Like, the name which you do not speak. Like, 20, mm, You know what I'm saying? So, with that last year that went by, you know, that, that place we won't talk about, a lot of stuff was happening, man. A lot of people were separated. A lot of a lot of hate going on. A lot of violence going on. A lot of, a lot of craziness going on. You know, you all could admit that. I mean, some people were doing it for... There was people... That took things for a purpose. People were doing things for a purpose. And then there was people doing things for a different purpose. You know what I'm saying? And it didn't, they didn't coexist, if you ask me. It kind of got things ugly and um, misconstrued everything. And, like, people, like, outside of the looking in, you know, uh, interpreted it so many different ways. It just caused even more separation for people that didn't even know what was really going on because all they got was what was seen on the TV. You know what I mean? A lot of craziness was going down. And the media was, like, had the puppet strings. You know what I'm saying? They, they had the fish reel going with like big old fat worms and everybody's just grabbing it up. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, we need to have that media free holiday where everything's just like a repeat. Or back in the day, like when I was younger, they used to cut. We, we didn't have 24 seven uh, TV programming back then when I was like a little bit younger. It, it started happening, you know, but uh, there was like in the poltergeist type shit that was like used to happen at the end of the night. They were like, you know, no more TV. And then it was time to, you know. Do something else or go to sleep. You know what I'm saying? And um, it was late. It would happen at night and stuff like that. And then, you know, start back at a certain time in the morning. We need something like that for media, yo. Because uh, they it got stuff going, going crazy. It was all going crazy out there, you know? Some stuff was fun, like the funny things, and some things were not, <laughs> you know? And I guess before um, before the last prez uh, left, I guess he did a bunch of pardons. I guess he had like a... Like a hundred pardons. You know what I'm saying? And, um, um, well, let me get back to that. Let me get back to something before I, like I said, there was a lot of craziness going on. You know what I'm saying? Like people were separated, a lot of hate, you know, like I was saying. And I hope that this year, and we forget about 20, mm, we can do a lot of like, try to get big things back together. Try to get everybody back together somehow. I don't even know. Like, don't leave it up to the media, you know, because they're just going to show us bad shit. Let's, it's, I think it would have to be up to the humans. I think it would have to be us, the, up to us humans to uh, make the change and not expect them to do it. I think we got to just try to bring everybody together somehow, some way. I don't know what to do. I don't know how. I got no ideas other than we should just bring us together somehow. But I don't know how we're going to do it, humans. But I'm up for suggestions because I think we need it. I think we need one of those like big moments and not a big negative moment. You know what I'm saying? Not one of those big you know, monumental, like, tragedies and shit. I'm talking about just a big moment in, like, in the good part of our history. Like, just some crazy, pivotal, uh, life-changing things or, you know, world-changing events, you know, that, that just uh, brings us all together. And it don't got to be the aliens. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be the aliens. All you aliens out there that are hiding, just, you don't got to be the ones that, like, make a change. You know what I'm saying? Or you could with some crazy technology or something. You know what I'm saying? Or 
Or maybe Bill and Ted does make a real good song and everybody does uh, be excellent to each other one day. Maybe. Maybe they will. <laughs> Who knows, man? Like I said, but we need to do something to mend any kind of bridge. If, if there ain't no bridge, you know, let's make them. Extend the olive branches of friendship. Don't break the branch off and beat somebody with it. You know what I'm saying? And then call them a hateful slur. Reach out the branch out. Pull them out of the water. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> help a, help somebody out. That's all I could say, man. Let's let's just try to change the tide. So that's how I was saying. The former prez. And we don't even got to say nobody's names right now. We don't got to drop nobody's names. You know what? We can. But I'm not going to right now. Maybe I got some more stuff for later. Maybe. You know. But for now. The former prez, I guess, did a bunch of pardons. He did like 100 pardons. And um, I ain't going to name them all because I don't know them all. So, you know, I only know a few that I need to know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, uh, yeah, so I guess he did a bunch of pardons and, like, all these people, you know, some, you know, you know, people that were incarcerated, he got them out, did all, did his thing. And one of them that thought, <laughs> had, it, had thought he was going to get pardoned was Mr. Joe Exotic. And Joe Exotic was so confident that he was going to get, like, he must have had that your people call my people. And they were like, they probably gave him the phone call. And we're like, there's a possibility. Well, like, what's the percentage? They were like 13. He's like, well, that's enough. And so he probably grabbed the phone, dropped it, went to Joe, knocked on the glass. He was like, Joe. And then Joe was like hanging out with his boyfriends. He's like, hold on, Tigers. And they all were nicknamed Tigers in jail, all his boyfriends and shit, right? Tiger Jones and Tiger Billy. And, you know, all these guys was all around him, his little boyfriends. So he's like, like, hold on a second. I got to talk to my agent or whoever the guy is, lawyer, whatever. Or your last agent, you know. So he comes up and he's like, look, they said. There is a chance that you could get pardoned today or tomorrow or whatever, like tomorrow or today. He got like the heads up. And so he was like, or like he got excited and growled in his super Joe exotic voice, you know, and then went back to his buddies like, this is great news. And he was like, Arr! and then went back to his like tiger boyfriends in jail. And then um, so he thought it was going to happen. And he was that confident that he ordered a limousine to pick him up. So I guess a limo pulled up in front of the prison to pick up Joe exotic. You know what I'm saying? He was going to leave his tiger cage with all his tiger boyfriends and uh, go back to his house. And he did not get pardoned. He was like, uh, not so fast. And I guess the limo sat out there for so long. And then he just drove off, man. That would have been tough. That would have been hurt, man. That would have been so tough to do. That would have been so rough, man. I think he was about to get out. And uh, you could see the freedom. You know what I'm saying? If he was in a place, if he was in a place with no windows or anything like that, I mean, like you didn't really visually see the freedom, but in your your mind and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? You you see the freedom. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about. People know out there what I'm saying. Like you can see the freedom. <laughs> so uh, he probably had that sense, man. He was probably like right there. You know what I'm saying? And then, uh, man, he didn't get that phone call or whatever. You know what I'm saying? He didn't get that the call from the warden or whatever the hell that you know whatever that call is supposed to happen. And uh, let him out, and it didn't happen. So he he's probably bummed out, dude. He's probably all cuddled up with his tiger boyfriends, crying about it right now. And uh, it's a shame. Sorry, Joe Exotic. We would have been all excited to see what you were gonna do, man. Too bad they didn't let you do like a social media in jail, cause they probably would been so like popular. They probably would, everybody watch probably want to uh, watch the shit out of it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, he that's a bummer for him, man. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? There'll be a show about that when he finally does get out, if he does. You know what I'm saying? They let, don't worry, Joe. They let Michael Vick out, and he got to play football again. You know what I'm saying? He was fighting dogs and stuff like that. So maybe you will get out and with these tigers. But maybe not, because dogs weren't a dangerous species, and tigers are. So maybe that's where you might not get out. So you might have to get creative and have to do something in jail. You know what I'm saying? Besides your tiger boyfriends. You got a husband out here. You know what I'm saying? How's he condoning all your tiger behavior? I'm just wondering. I'm just saying. <laughs> but, you know, you thought you was getting out, but you didn't. So, no leash for the tiger. You're, you're back in the cage, boy. Get back in the cage. They had to put you in there. <laughs> no season, uh, next season of Tiger King. You know what I'm saying? So, anyways... It's been going around like uh, getting real popular. Uh, it just kind of hit the street, 
you know, hit the buzz around not even 24 hours ago. Some dude uh, came out with a diss track on Eminem. Some rapper was just like, some rapper that a lot of people don't, like, nobody really knows. You know what I'm saying? And he was all, like, on a super clout chase. Like, mega clout chase. My man was, like, like GPS and putting it in his maps and shit, like, in Google Maps. He was like, Siri, show me where the clout is. <laughs> and he was waiting for the maps to say something, and it didn't happen. <laughs> and so... So he decided to say, where's Detroit at from my house? And they were like, it's about fucking 80 fucking thousand miles away or whatever. Cause, or 8,000 miles away. You know what I'm saying? You're in many states away or whatever. So my man decided to make a diss track. And his name is like Asses or something. Asses? Oh, no, it's As Is. Or is it Aziz? Isn't there a comedian named Aziz? If I, every time I look the way to write his name, it could be Aziz, man. And I don't want to offend nobody if, like, he's a, you know what I'm saying? If I'm saying this rain asses. But the way this rhyme, the reason this I bring this up, it was so horrible. And like I said, I did that reaction to the fucking um, worst freestyles. And then YouTube messed with me and trying to say the song belonged to the game. And I'm like, man, everybody was rapping a different beat. But none of them songs was ever on a record. I hope not because that was crap. You know what I'm saying? But they gave me some stupid shit about it. So I won't play this one just in case. It's bad anyways. You know what I'm saying? It's horrible. And um, so the dude comes in, starts trying to diss Eminem like, off of like old rap lyrics and shit. And uh, it was kind of weak. It was like super weak. And it was like a super slow song. And then he tried to say that uh, Eminem stole his flow. <laughs> and, he's, and he's not even flowing like Eminem. Or he, Eminem, like it's not even an Eminem type flow. He's just like talking real slow. Like, uh, I don't know. Like he was on that lean or something. That whatever that shit is, that lean. Lean. Are they still doing that shit? Yeah, so like I said, these guys are trying to come out at come at Eminem with all this stuff. And like I said, we're already separated and shit like that. So don't try to make it or like a race thing if you're gonna come out and battle and just be like, You're white and I'm black or like I'm Puerto Rican and you're white or you know, I'm Mexican, you're white or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm Chinese, Chinese, Korean, anything. You know what I'm saying? And um, I just think, like I said, there's a lot of separation, man. We just need to quit this shit. You know, if, even if you're going to go and battle, make a rap, make it about the rap battle. Don't try to make it like a stupid race thing. Even if you did, because he's better than you anyways. Like, even you couldn't, because if he made it about race, how good he raps, it probably it's, people would probably kill Eminem if he did like a racist rap battle against somebody. Because shit would probably be so potent and y'all know it like if somebody <laughs> wanted to go like make it about race and like they were like all right you can write whatever you want and you can write whatever you want oh my lord eminem would oh my god do you it would be so insane what that dude would write if he was allowed to do it if they were like you can do this you can do this like you guys signed papers and it was like pay-per-view you know what i'm saying but anyways we need to stop all the separation shit and you know what i'm saying like i said let's make can't that be a trend like, like, uh, like fucking parachute pants. You know what I'm saying? Like, just fucking like, like, leave it back and leave it way back. You know what I'm saying? Fucking all this separation, all this fucking hate. Like, when is that going to be like an old trend? Like, or like cheap fashion, like corduroys or something like that was out of fat. Well, I, I can't say nothing. They're coming. They're back. So I don't know, man. Like I said, like an old, something that just ain't, ain't around no more. Like the beta or the, you know what I'm saying? Like the fucking beta, not the VHS, the fucking big ass fucking beta. Or like the fucking, like the cassettes of the fucking beta were the size of the mixer I got over here. Like fucking, it was huge. And then the fucking beta thing was like fucking 30 pounds. That shit was heavy as hell. It's a huge ass machine. And then they went down to the VCR, which was lighter. And it just played the smaller cassette. But good lord, the beta was giant, man. It was a big ass piece of machine. It was almost like that old school TV you guys used to have. I even had one in my house. It was like this wooden ass long thing. And it was like a, it opened in the front for the TV and then the top where you could, it would fold up and it was a record player. It was one of them shits. You know what I'm saying? Like some old technology like that. We need to make that shit like an old trend and forget about it. You know what I'm saying? Just forget it. And don't make it like a valuable collectible either. If we do make it an old trend, don't make it come back like comic books or like trading cards. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I got this racism statement. It's worth about $70 right now online. You know what I'm saying? Save that shit. We don't want that. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I got this one. You know what I mean? Or if we're going to just take the value away from them. You know what I mean? Just take the value away from them and appreciate them for what they are if they're just jokes. 
I, you know how many jokes I used to get because I'm Mexican? How many, like, wetback jokes and spick jokes I used to always get and, like, lawn-cutting jokes? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, they were fucking funny. I'm just saying they were funny, and I would come back with my own. They used to be, like, that was a game. There used to be TV shows on, like, ripping on each other. If you were short, fat, skinny, ugly, pretty, whatever. You know what I'm saying? That shit is funny. And you gotta be, you should be able to play because those were like the easiest ones to do the jokes on. You know what I'm saying? Shit. We need to come back to that. Like I said, make all this separation just like like an old trend. Let's get back to the grooving. So anyways, back to this ass's dude. This dude that raps like ass. No, anyways, it was so bad that he had to turn his comments off. I guess people were going off on the comments on this dude like because it was just bad job. You know, if you did a good job, that's one thing. But it was just horrible. And, it, like, it was just a big clout. It was a big clout chase. Like I said, he he was asking Google Maps where the clout was. And Siri didn't know that shit. Neither did the Google Map. They didn't know what to do. He didn't realize that it's a lo- It's not a location. No, I'm just kidding. It's like the force. It's in you. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, yeah, man. So I think if you're trying to get somewhere in hip-hop, man. I don't think that's the way to go to go and like just attack somebody or if you're going to try to do it, like do it for the sport. Like the way Joyner Lucas and like, um, what was his name? Tory Lanez. Like when them two guys went at each other, they did it like rap battle style. You know what I'm saying? They don't fight or say no dumb shit. Them guys just went at each other, man. Like a couple, they went like two or three rounds or something, man. It was awesome. You know what I'm saying? They just went at them when, you know, just rapping, dude. And, um, so like I said, if you're going to do something like that, just keep it about the hip hop, man. Just do it with the rap. Keep it about the art instead of the fucking, don't bring the race in. Just keep it about art. You know what I'm saying? And uh, appreciate people that paved the way for a lot of artists. Whatever color you are, regardless of who it is, if there's an iconic musician of any color, they paved the way for any musician coming up. If it's that the person's style, you know what I mean? If that person comes up with that style. So it's just like, you. that's why I'm saying you gotta, you gotta keep that part out. Just appreciate the art. I think uh, just be yourself, man. Wrap your ass off, do your lyrics, do you, and you'll probably get to where you need to be. And if you don't, still enjoy what you do, man. And if it's for you, enjoy it. Still have fun, do what you do, man, and uh, appreciate the art as it is. You know what I'm saying? And still keep doing what you're doing, and you never know. But this ass's dude is not good. Like, this, all the lyrics were bad, dude. Like, I'm not even going to break them down, but they were so bad. They were, like, really bad. And, um, you know, like I said, if you're going to do what you do, come at it, bring your best, step your game up. Um, like MGK, when he came at Eminem, that shit was really good. I don't think he won, but man, that was like some really good shit. Like he brought the fire, dude. Like MGK, Eminem, Joyner and fucking, um, uh, Tory Lanez. Those were some fucking good rap battles. Like MGK brought fucking fire, dude. That was probably like one of the best raps he's ever done in his life. Like my man just brought the fucking heat and just like, bam, bam, did some real digs at Eminem. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and then Eminem retaliated with his shit and just put a little more levels and, like, maybe, uh, you know, a little more angles and shit to his, you know, comeback, which was, it was pretty damn creative. Like, if you look at all the uh, angles of that Kill Shot song and everything. So, so that's why I gave it the, the you know, the, the, my points went towards him, not just because we're both from the D or nothing, just because of, like, the way he did it. There's a whole deep story behind the Kill Shot song. You know what I'm saying? There's a film, you know, all that stuff that matched his, you know, uh, MGK's real name. It's a fucking whole sweet, ingenious way he fucking did that song. Just like his albums, you know, the the Alfred Hitchcock concept. And he did the side A and side B. That was so cool the way he did that whole concept. You know what I'm saying? That was cool shit. And like I said, back in the day when you used to get a cassette or CD, those concepts would be so cool to open up. You know what I'm saying? And see the cool stories which went with the lyrics of the songs and who worked on what. And you would see like producers, oh shit, this dude was here, this dude, you know what I'm saying? And it was cool stuff back then. But like I said, now you see it all on the Instagrams and all the social medias. So, but not as much as detail, I don't think. I don't think they do all that when they do the records. Now it's just like, you know, stream it, download it, thank you. And then, you know, go to my social media and support me. But, you know, it's a whole different game now. That part of the game is different. So, you know, you got to go with that. But, I just think that would be, it was just cool and interactive. Maybe now with the new, you know, technology, with the way we got like uh, VR and all the other shit, um, maybe there can be like a more interactive thing, you know, that's, that would top that, you know what I'm saying, to some people. 
and it's probably it'd probably be really sweet. But the social media is kind of is because sometimes you'll get a like from somebody that you you're a fan of and all that kind of shit. It'll fucking make your day. But like I said, man, I wouldn't go after Eminem. If you are, like I said, you better have your fucking all your ducks in a row, and you better be ready to go. Like, don't just bring one crazy hard verse. You know what I'm saying? Or three. You might need to have like about at least a dozen because if it was like a legit battle, you're gonna go three to five rounds or whatever. Or people think you were that good, even though, like, let's say you were really good and still lost, they would still want to see more. And you, you know what I'm saying? And it comes to the point where you got to be prepared. Or it's going to be super lame. and You know what I'm saying? You got to make the best of it. But, yeah, man, like I said, just bring that top game, man, or you will be in trouble. You'll be in some trouble. <laughs> you could be in some trouble. Warning, humans. Don't go after Eminem unless you're ready. Like I said, better be ready, ready. Like, there's people that are prepared for things and, like, emergencies and all these things, like in Doomsday Preppers. I don't think there's, like, a Doomsday Prepper kit to go battle Eminem. There's no, like, pepper kit. You know what I mean? You could do all the fucking, all the rhymes you want to do. And he's good, man. It's just regardless. You know what I'm saying? He's just really fucking good. And y'all got to just deal with it. That's just the facts of it. All these new youngsters thinking that's the way to go. But like I said, I just think if you guys do your thing, um, a lot of people like your sound. A lot of people like that sound that's out there right now that... A lot of that auto tuning and all the you know singing and kind of hip hop mixing together, and they're having fun with that stuff. And you know what I'm saying? Like I said, just uh, I would just you know stay your stay your lane. Don't try to go. Don't try to jump all them hurdles yet. You know what I'm saying? Because first, listen to people that have lyrics before you go to try to battle somebody if you don't have lyrics. Like if you're what people consider, if you're what people consider like one of those mumble rappers, all right? Like you're gonna say like the same lines a bunch of times or. You know what I'm saying? Like, or that one guy that was just like, those guys I was playing on them last freestyles, like, you know, some of their records sound like that, where they're just like really bad and limited vocabulary. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're going to go against somebody that's got some lyrics, listen to what they're saying before you come over here and just be like, like that one dude, four bars all night, you know what I'm saying? Pissing off a producer. I mean, I hope he was getting paid at least because I would... Man, you ain't seen your family if that if you got to work on that dude's record, four bars a night, shit. Yeah, you ain't gonna go against Eminem or nobody like that if you only got four bars in the studio a night to make your fucking one song. You know what I'm saying? Cause shit, my man will do a thousand words and more than a thousand words in a song, man. Like, what was that record he fucking just had, man? It's fucking crazy. So I just be careful out there, and like I said, stay in your lane, do your thing, man. Everybody likes your music, anyways. There's no reason to get destroyed by somebody that's like your parents age and shit and is gonna fucking go in there and destroy your ass like i said even when he gets dementia and shit like even if he starts getting crazy and losing his mind his rhymes are gonna be insane not only he'll be talking about crazier shit than he already does and that shit's already crazy wait till he has to fucking start wearing a diaper and shit and start shitting himself and he still wants to just rhyme at the nursing home, just start fucking going crazy. People are gonna, those are gonna be on fucking TikToks, you know, the whatever the new TikTok is. There's that one company coming out. I forget what their name is, and they're working on a new net, like, um, a new unrestricted type of uh, internet type thing or whatever. So it's interesting to see how that happens because I don't know how if the government is gonna let it happen. You know what I'm saying? Who knows if they can even have that uh, type of power to regulate that? But I mean, they get away with doing a lot of shit. So who knows about that? I'm gonna have to look into more of it. I forgot the name of the company too. But um, I'm going to have to keep my eye open for that. Well, humans, the NFL playoffs are still going on. And yes, my Lions aren't in them, which is nothing new. That is no news for anyone. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know it's things and stuff like that, guys. But uh, I guess we hired a new manager finally, uh, But which is kind of weird, man. They, um, we got that Bob Quinn guy from the Patriots and I don't know how long he was our manager for I forget because I mean our team's just not good some like this last year I kind of barely watched the team it was tough um so yeah we got this new manager and they signed him like for like a six-year deal I think he worked for the Saints and um that's a that's a long time I, I so I don't know if he was I mean the Saints were always a good team but that doesn't mean nothing because the Patriots are a good team and people were like it's all about Belichick in a system it's not Brady, it's 
Belichick. You know what I'm saying? It's all about the coach. For all you non-sports people, Belichick is the coach of the Patriots, where Tom Brady played for and won a bunch of Super Bowls and playoff games. And <laughs> now Brady's on Tampa Bay on another football team, and he's about to be close to winning another Super Bowl. And the team that has the coach that they said the coach was so good is not doing good at all. He's doing really bad. You know what I'm saying? He's doing so bad that he, like, threw the phone at one of the last games of the season. Like, he was just, the upstairs called and was like, what's going on here? And they were like, shut up. You know what I'm saying? He just hung up on his check writers. You know what I'm saying? It was going that good for Mr. Belichick. But anyways, um, like I said, the playoffs are going on. And um, we got a new manager. And I guess he worked for the Saints. I guess he worked for a good team. But like I said, you can't just sip the Kool-Aid just because my man was on a good organization. Because, like, we learned that lesson because... We thought the Patriots were good, and we brought this Quinn guy over. We're like, maybe he's the one bringing all the talent. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he's the one. Maybe. But uh, maybe he's our savior for the Lions. Maybe he's going to help Stafford get past that hump. You know? That's the kind of stuff we hear here. That's why I'm doing it in that in that voice, because our sportscasters sometimes puff a little, you know, too many rainbows in our in our sports fans sometimes. And I used to accept it like a Care Bear. You know what I'm saying? Like one of those Care Bear, <laughs> the Care Bear stare. You know what I'm saying? Like the rainbow just pops, get me, used to get me every season. There's going to, so it's going to be different. I would tell everybody this year, it's going to be different. Or everybody would say before the season, we're due. This year, I mean, dude, it's got to be, we're due this year. We are, it's, it's got to be our time this year. That's kind of shit we always say. It sucks. <clears throat> I brought this up before. It sucks. But anyways, we got this new guy from a team that's been good for a long time. Drew Brees, I think he retired, or they've been saying he's going to. And we'll see what happens. We'll see if this guy, and I think the coach is next. And then um, hopefully, like I said, hopefully we get a quarterback and uh, start building up the defense and go from there, man. I, I think it's, I'm excited about this offseason to see this new whatever, this new thing. And hopefully Stafford comes here and finishes out. There's a lot of rumor of him wanting trades. But I don't know, man, because he's kind of like quiet all the time. They make a lot of funny songs over here on our local radio stations because every time they interview him, he says, um, a lot. He's like, um, um, you know. So they do like a lot of funny song remixes with him saying, um, which is kind of funny. Um, they do the Take On Me song and <laughs> they, do that. they do a lot of them. And um, they do the uh, Star Wars. Um, I don't know what song it is. It's that dun, 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 dun. And it, but it's all him saying ums. You know, so it's kind of funny when they do that stuff. But I feel bad, man, because he is a good quarterback, man. Um, I'm not He's not, like, maybe the best quarterback, but he's a good quarterback, dude. My man's got a good arm. He's got a good feel for the game. And sometimes when those team, when our team is, like, you know, on point, I mean, that dude looks fucking crazy. But it's like, I mean, you can't just have, like, a, a team can't have a perfect scenario. It comes to the point where, um, like I said, a quarterback's got to be a leader and do that thing. And that's where I always, like, have the my that's where I'm always on both sides with my quarterback on our team, because like I said, man, they were, they didn't know if it was the Belichick guy or Brady, and Brady went over to this team where um what was his name pa uh Jameis Winston was the quarterback, and my man had like a bunch of touchdowns like 30 touchdowns or so, and but he had like more interceptions than touchdowns. That means he had over 30 interceptions, like that's a lot of turnovers. But according to like this, now that Brady's there, I guess their turnovers are like less than like they cut. Over 50% of the turnovers down. The defense got better. The whole team offense got better. And uh, it's just a whole different thing. And But everybody says it's the coach or is it the player? If you ask me, I think it's the player. Now, I'm not like um, I'm not like a, like a Brady slap or anything, but I am a Brady fan only because I like the underdog story. Like, my man was like the last pick of the draft. I don't know how many times people said this story, like, he was like, I mean, every time, there's a video out there where they show the combine or whatever, where they show these guys going out there skill, showing their talent. And the commentators are like ripping on Brady. They got him like in his boxers or something and like rotating him to show his physique. And they're like, the people are like, I don't know if this guy's ever seen a gym. You know what I'm saying? Like, And they said his 40 was like slow as hell. It was like watching a, a slow-mo video. And his vertical was whack. And everything was just slow and nothing. And this dude ended up being, like, the greatest quarterback of all time. And if he wins another Super Bowl, holy crap, man. Um, I think this will be his, like, 10th Super Bowl if he makes it. Or something bananas like that. I think this might be his 10th Super Bowl, and he won, like, six of these appearances. 
That is that's that's like goat status, man. And not, I'm not saying just like football. That might even be like goat athlete status, like one of the best athletes, period. Because that's just I mean, but like I said, they were ripping on him, saying he sucked. Um, the coach, I think he was the last pick of the draft, dude. Like the very last quarterback or the very last player picked in the whole entire like I forget how many picks there are, and I think he was it. And I guess he told the coach even. What's up, I'm Tom Brady in this one video. And the co- the general manager, Robert Kraft, I think his name is, says something like, yeah, you're my sixth round pick. And the coach said that, like, Tom Brady looked at him with his laser. He wasn't even a – he was like third or fourth string quarterback. He wasn't even like nothing. And he said he looked in that dude's face and said that, I'm the best choice this organization has ever made. And I was like, holy crap, man. And, like, you know, some people just got that in them to make themselves – Whatever it is to keep going, like whatever Jordan had and what like LeBron's got, you know, like LeBron had a lot of shit going on him, man, because he had like Kobe in front of him, Jordan and a lot of other greats, but everybody kept putting Jordan in his face, you know what I'm saying? And putting Jordan in his face like all the time, you know what I'm saying? Like this stuff about the rings and everything like that, like, and he was a young kid, you know, he didn't even play college. My man went like, I think he was like 19 or 18 years old. I forget how he might've been 19 or 18. I know he wasn't like old enough to buy a beer. He was like a young man jumping in a man's game. You know what I'm saying? In a man's world. Like, it was just big boy planet. You know what I'm saying? And fast lane, too. Not only big boy planet, you're a star where superstars are, man. Y'all living that fast life. And you're a young kid just getting thrown out there. Not only that, you keep pushing Jordan on him. Pat, 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 pat. Jordan, Jordan, Jordan. So that young dude, like, as a young kid, like, he had to develop whatever he had to do to keep being LeBron. You know what I'm saying? Same way, like I said, like Brady kept, I think Brady kept that chip on him. Everybody always saying he was the last pick of the draft and he ain't shit. And then every year he's too old and he's an old man. And that dude just carries it on him. And I think he always will do that. And I, I that's crazy, man. Like I said, like you got to appreciate that what he got. Like that's just some crazy hustle right there, in my opinion. But like I said, I'm, I'm not, it's just crazy. I just appreciate that. Like, like the way they feel like, even though he's so successful, they still feel like there's something that got to be better, that something's got to be done better. Like, and that's what I think makes people great. Like, I don't think LeBron is satisfied all the time. Yeah, I think he why because you know the sports people are gonna get at him about one stupid turnover or one bad choice of like he should have took the shot, or you know what I'm saying? Like, or he missed that shot and he had a guy wide open. Like, it's like a you you don't um it's like what is it um you damned if you do and you damned if you don't. So I think it's tough on those guys, you know, like all them big new stars, like especially like like our quarterback, uh, like Stafford, too. Like everybody wants this play. Like we just want a playoff win even like a Super Bowl would be bananas. I think the, like the whole state, like Upper Peninsula uh, and right here and like people like close to Detroit that even the place like that are around the little skirt states that are still like Detroit fans would like like probably like have like some kind of like heart condition or like some kind of anxiety type of attack. If the Lions hit a Super Bowl, you know what I mean? That's how much, like, our team is, like, you know, wanting one of those. You know what I'm saying? So, there's a lot on Stafford because he wanted to come here. When he came out of Georgia, he wanted to come to Detroit. And he wanted to turn the team around. You got to respect that because we were, like, really bad, dude. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, I remember Calvin Johnson saying, I think one season he said that, um, I think it was one season he played. He he played for like I thought over three quarterbacks in like one year, <laughs> when we were like zero and sixteen or whatever, man. And Calvin out there still putting his body out there with those amazing catches and whatnot. But like I said, man, it's tough to be a uh, a star here too because we we got like gigantic expectations. So now when you come to Detroit, like Chauncey Billups and the going hard to work Pistons won in 04. Now we want you guys to do what they did or. Or re-implicate the bad boys. Well, you can't. Yeah, it'll be hard to because the rules keep changing every year. The games are all changing. So it's going to be a little tougher for these guys. They're going to have to um, improvise and adapt their own ways to figure out a way to win. Because it's going to, unless they go back to old rules, they won't be able to play like the bad boys especially. That was a physical play, uh, type of basketball. And then even in 04, uh, I think in 2004 is when they got rid of the hand check. Like the hand check itself. Because uh, the Pistons, I think, had a record of keeping teams under like 70 points in a basketball game. And if you look at the scores now, some of you and kids, they were keeping guys under 100 points. Like not only 100, but like under 70. Like 69, 65 points in a whole four-quarter game. 
Some of them guys are getting over 60 and a half now. So think about that if you're a young kid, you know, a younger guy watching right now. And appreciate it if you are, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, um, like I said, it's just the game's changed. So in that in that aspect, you can't expect them to try to do what those guys did unless the rules change back to the old school rules. It would just be almost impossible. It would be really difficult. In my opinion, it would just be really difficult. You know? But on that, I'll leave that going. And I'm going to jump to the UFC, where Conor McGregor and Dustin Poirier are going to do it again. And they're fighting this Saturday. They fought a long time ago. And, uh, man, I want to tell you what. Excuse me. I was watching them guys come to Fight Island. That Fight Island thing is kind of cool, man. If a lot of people, um, you know, we couldn't do it for all the sports because, you know, some teams just have, some leagues just have too many teams. You know, it'd be hard to do it. But uh, it's a cool idea, man. It's a really good thing to think about. And um, like I said, when I was talking about hiring professional fans, you know what I'm saying? Um, that way it could make it exciting. Like that fight island would be perfect. Um, wherever they have the USC fans, you get everybody tested. Um, maybe you do a lottery for tickets or something like that. And you get people in there, man. And, uh, you know, make people feel back, you know, a little piece like we're getting back to normal, man. Watching like a real sport event where, you know, because some, some of them athletes, man, feed on the crowd. And I don't know if it's some. I, it could be even all. And I'm not speaking for them. But, I mean, it almost looks like that when you would see even a pro wrestler, man. You get a wrestler on wwe or whatever the new ones are the new league or whatever elite wrestling or whatever it is and you would see like the whole kogan put the ear up or my man would look and you know fill the crowd up and he'd be like you know the crowd would be like seeing him get beat up and you would see him like the crowd cheer and his arm would stay you know it wouldn't drop on the ground when he did the three check you know the drop it drops twice and then the crowd would be like no and then he's like oh he don't let the fall and he fucking starts climbing back and he gets his strength back and he comes back anyway you know what i'm saying like that kind of shit and the crowd like would feed on that Cause those guys put their bodies to a lot of shit, whatever sport they're playing. And the crowd, man, kind of is probably like the only, you know, a really good medicine for those guys to make them get through those events. And it's probably getting more and harder and harder. That's why you hear some of these guys in all different entertainment venues, um, uh, different entertainment genres, you know, whether, whatever it is, sports, music, whatever acting, they're having some kind of like, like type of, uh, maybe anxiety or something where they're getting like, you know, it doesn't, it just feels different. Even like comedians, they probably don't want you sitting in your car for them. Some of them drive through shows, but they have to do what they get. They got to work, and they know you guys want to see them. So it's it's just got to be tough. Like I, you know what I'm saying? It's just got to be tough stuff. And I hope like stuff gets a little closer to getting back. But uh, that fight island's pretty crazy. It's pretty interesting. You get to um, if you get to see the recaps and stuff, you get to see all the. It's almost like a red carpet for fighters. Uh, people all show up and, you know, they come up there and, uh, they're showing up for the fights and, um, it's pretty cool shit, man. They, uh, you see all the stars. Like I saw Khabib show up. Khabib, uh, I always mess his name up. I'm not going to say it this time, but you know who Khabib is. He's the man. And, uh, so he shows up, he's not even fighting nobody, but he's there. He's probably going to watch McGregor and the Poirier fight or maybe even Holloway. Well, I don't know if Holloway is even close to his weight. I think Holloway might be too light. So, but he's probably going to watch probably McGregor and Poirier and maybe, Whoever else is on the card that's close to his weight class for a possible fight. But I know he's watching McGregor. And uh, if you ask me, um, McGregor looks really good. He looks really good. But the, back to Khabib, um, uh, Habib, they uh, interviewed him and they were asking about GSP. Like everybody wants him to fight GSP, George St. Pierre. And George St. Pierre is kind of old and a veteran. But my man still got it. He could still throw down. And um, so I don't know like if he's still got enough to go with Khabib the way he like, mauls you. But it would be a still fight that people would want to see and I'd want to see because I'm just a fan of both of them. And uh, I respect George GSP, man. He's fucking, he's been around for a long time, man. And uh, he's proven himself time and time again. Whether he went or lost, he proved himself as an ultimate sportsman. You know what I mean? But anyways, um, back to McGregor. Uh, man, he looks fucking good, dude. He's got his head shaved. He looks real serious. And I guess they have like a big bottle of his whiskey locked up. They put it in a lockbox so he can't fucking have it till victory. They don't want him drinking during training. And he told the guy uh, this earlier today. He's like, well, you know, I can get in there if I want to. I'm just going to save it for victory. They want me to save it for my victory. And then he was um, talking some cool game, man. Uh, a lot of times he would say, you know, you're going to drop a guy. You're not going to be, you know, he's talking. He was going to finish him in 60 seconds. So they asked him about that comment and he was like, confirmed it. He's like, yeah. I kind of feel like he's going to not last that long or survive my punches. I don't feel like no man would. And he goes, and it's not a knock on him. 
It's just the way I feel I am right now. He feels like he's just in this crazy zone. zone. You know what I'm saying? And um, and he looks good, dude. Like I'm telling you, I've been watching some of his shit. He's not leaking too much, but he got a little bit of stuff out there. And he's looking good. And they were asking him about his boxing and about different um, aspects that he's learning. And he said he's really uh, interesting. Um, he said he's going to be flying through the air or whatever that means. That was an interesting quote. He said something on that interview, like, I'm going to be flying through the air. I'm like, hmm, I'm, I'm, what is that? You know what I'm saying? So um, I know he's working on different games because if you do want to go back to that Habib rematch, because, I mean, all all paths would lead to that rematch because, I mean, that would be the end all be all. You know what I'm saying? Get your rematch or your redemption the way you did against Diaz. You know what I'm saying? You came back and you won the next fight. You know what I mean? Like, um, which I would like to see a trilogy of that. I mean, I don't know how, I mean, like I said, Nick Diaz would probably show up or Nate Diaz would probably show up, but um, I don't know how he is in this age right now. I'd have to see how he looks in his training. But I know he would never quit. I know that. But I would like to see, uh, you know what I'm saying, all paths would lead to him probably be facing um, Habib again, which I would love to see, like I said. Um, I think uh, Connor probably underestimated the strength of Habib, and I think he was going to be able, he thought he was going to probably break through a lot of those grabs and um, grips and holds that he was doing. But, you know, reality set in, and I think that, you know, people say conditioning and conditioning – I think it was just really exhausting trying to just survive in whatever position you were in against Khabib. Against Habib. So, I mean, dude, it, it was a that was a good fight, and I wouldn't mind seeing that again. You never know, man. He could change his game up and uh, you know learn some new shit and maybe fucking uh re, like I said, redemption like he did against Diaz. Maybe fucking come out and beat Habib, and then everybody want to see that that third fight. Habib would probably be that would be his first loss, his first L. And they were asking McGregor, too, about a passable fight with Holloway, who just won last week on that fight I was talking about. That was a great card. That was such a great fight card, man. Holloway looked good. He looked really good. But uh, you know, he did look good, but the other guy didn't. You know what I mean? Like, the other guy looked a little intimidated and everything. I don't know if it was the lights at a big show. I don't know, man. But, I mean, my man took advantage of it, though. You're supposed to you do what you got to do. You got to go beat my man. And Holloway looked really good. He was getting all cocky at the end. Uh, showing off a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Like talking all that smack, and it was kind of fun, man. It was a good. It, the whole fight card was good, though. Like I said, all the fights were entertaining, from fight one to the main event. It was awesome. That one guy who did that sweet ass kick, where the guy grabbed his leg and he did that little karate kick like he used to do when he was kids. He fought again and he got KO'd. And the guy he was fighting, which was awesome, was supposed to be a tune up. He said it was gonna be a tune up. Like this guy was gonna fight for like a bigger event. And uh, the guy, he was just supposed to be like a warm-up. They was going to go through the motions. And my man, the tune-up, tuned his ass up. He was like, bing! Fucking caught him with his head kick, man. It was great. Oh, man, it was just a great fight card. That was great. But this Saturday is going to be another good one, like I said. And uh, McGregor looks good. And there's a lot of possibilities for him if he gets his victory this Saturday. I'm not going to mock, um, I'm not going to knock on Poirier either because I want to see what he's got. Because he's also gotten better since their last fight. He's not the same dude either. And um, if you watch his last fights, I mean, he was uh, maybe not a won it, but he still got like, um, he's still pretty good, man. Like I said, he's still good and technical. So I don't think the fight's going to be a boring snooze fest. I think it's actually going to be pretty damn good. And I'm excited to see it. And I don't know about you guys, but I am. And in boxing news, I heard there's a new heavyweight fight in the Burks. I think it's already signed. I, I, I think... Uh, I got to see what day the fight is. I forgot to see what day it is. So big ass um, Tyson Fury is going to fight big ass Anthony Joshua, and I guess they already booked the fight. I just I, I don't even know if there's a fight date. I got to check, but I just heard about this earlier today, and uh, I know they were talking about it for a while, but I didn't know it was confirmed. And uh, so, anyways, Tyson Fury just beat Wilder twice and all that, and they were saying he cheated with the gloves and there was all this stupid crap. I did. I just think he beat Wilder. And it got exposed like Wilder like doesn't seem like a very technical boxer. It just seems like he would always try to set up the guy for that one big shot all the time. And this guy just was onto that. And he's too technical. And you can't do that to him. So he was just like, I'm just as big as you. We got the same reach or bigger reach. And, uh, you know, it was just like it was this bad news for Wilder both times. So that's just what I think. I just think Wilder just kind of got exposed. He's got crazy power. I don't deny that. But he just doesn't box box. You know, and I think you need to know how to box more than that. 
Um, it was eventually going to happen. You know what I'm saying? I think Joshua would have beat him too. I think um, because Joshua boxes a little more than um, him. And I think he boxes a little more even than Fury. And so those guys are fighting each other. And uh, Joshua got his redemption match against um, Ruiz. Uh, he was the first heavyweight champion of Mexican, you know, for my people. Um, but then Ruiz didn't like train right on the rematch. He didn't take it serious, man. He got all the money and the lights and all the fame. And everybody was loving him. And uh, he didn't take it serious, in my opinion. That's why he lost. He got fucking schooled. He looked fucking heavier than ever. And now I've been seeing him. He looks like he's in shape, but I don't know if he's really training hard. I think he's just all about his social media right now. And that sucks, man, because I was a fan of him. And I took a lot of heat on that social media because I was picking on him because he was all doing rap videos and shit. And I said, dude, you should be training you got to fight Joshua in a minute, man. you got to fucking... And you're over here doing rap videos and shit. And people jumped on me, all his fans. And they was coming at my medias and doing all my shit. And uh, so I was like, whatever, man. You know, you guys do what you do. And um, so anyways, they're talking about Ruiz getting the fight. Uh, one of the winners or whatever, I think, of this fight. And I think he loses to either one. Because I don't think he's taking his training this serious. And I'm a fan of his, like I said. And it bums me out. Kind of like Adrian Broner too, man. Like... I thought Adrian Broner was going to be like undefeated fighter. But I feel like sometimes in his training aspects, he has so many people around him and he wants to be so uh, like, you know, um, flashy and um, cocky or whatever, or super arrogant or whatever. And um, it kind of affected his training a lot. And I think that's why he lost a couple of the fights that he lost because I think he didn't take it serious. Like Maidana's and even Pacquiao and like everybody else that he fought because um, Garcia I thought of the Garcia fight I was so amped about because it looked like he was training serious. But he still ain't working on his footwork and stuff like that. But he's got the power in the hands, man. But he just fucking wouldn't throw punches against Garcia. It was weird. So I was like, I just thought it was weird. Like I said, I, th I thought he was going to be a better fighter than what he is. He's still a good fighter, great fighter. But I thought his career, his record was going to be a little different myself. But he just didn't take, like, to my opinion. Like I said, I'm no expert or whatever. But I just feel like, to me, as if like from watching it, I just feel like, because you get to see all everybody's training all through all throughout every fight in boxing, and um, it just looked like he wasn't like a hundred percent in. And then when the fight came, he just was happy to get that paycheck, win or lose. And that's bummed out. So, like I said, if if uh, Ruiz gets a rematch with those that guy, or whoever out of these two fights, and if he fights Tyson Fury, he's too short. He ain't gonna get close to Tyson Fury. He'll beat his ass. And he'll have both eyes all swole closed. And if he fights Joshua again, Joshua saw what to do just to move around because he wasn't couldn't do nothing about it. And uh, Joshua will probably just try to do the same thing, move around and just fucking jab him and pound him. And it could be bad news. So, my friends um, have been telling me about this show and I haven't watched it. There's like, I don't know how many seasons of a show called Black Mirror. And I was like, man, I, you know, like I said, there's so many shows out there and like so many series. Like I can't watch them all because I got like there's other streaming services. I watch whatever on and this on and then sports and, you know, and then I like movies. So it's like it's crazy. You know, it's, it's so and I like to watch movies on this and that and this and that. So I can't always like catch into a series. But Black Mirror is not that new. Everybody I'm sure I knows about it. Well, I was like going to give it a try. You know, I'm like, oh, let me start a season one, episode one. And I was like. What the hell did I just watch? Like, I, I watched the whole episode. I was blown the hell away. I was not expecting that at all. Like, I got mad at my buddy because I, I only watched two. Like, I think I watched two episodes. So the first episode was really messed up. You know what I'm saying? They made my man, like, have sex with a pig. And it's not new now because, I, like I said, I'm sorry, but it ain't new now. So there ain't no spoilers here. I was like, not. I never seen this, dude. I wasn't ready, dude. I was not ready. I was not ready for this. Humans, I was like, what? And then everybody that in the world watching, you know what I'm saying? And then the other one about, like, people had this little, like, you had, like, points. Which is scary because I know they have social credit scores already in certain places and countries, which I ain't going to say right now. But they're going to do that shit here because of all this social media and the media is controlling shit. We gave the media too much control now. But in this episode, <clears throat> there was, like, you had this like points for something. I don't know how you gain points. You ride this bike and get points. I don't know what the fuck. Everything was all around you, like computer screens everywhere. 
and everything was just all digital. Like you would have a digital avatar, you would talk to people, but then you'd have an avatar to go somewhere. Shit was weird. And that's kind of scary, man, to think about it now. Like some people would be okay with that. Not me. Not me. And not to mention that fucking animal shit. That was messed up. It was for like a kidnapping. And then they said that they released her a half hour before my man even did the deed. Which was even more messed up. So I got two episodes in. And I'm kind of not sure if I'm going to go any further. Because the other, the second episode, like I said, was all weirder and scarier. I got scared. I was like, man, that's scary. Like, that shit feels like that could happen. I was like, ooh. Maybe look out the window and shit like that. Like, I almost wanted to move this curtain right now. You know what I'm saying? It was just that. It was like that. So, I don't know. Like I said, I might give it a try. But I no guarantees. There's no guarantees. Well, it's been a long time. And I thought I would just bring it back. Why not? Because it's been a while. And some of you that are new to the channel may have seen it in a previous episode or maybe you haven't but i decided to bring it back and i might bring it back here and there once in a while just pop it in here and there but i got another little clip of in this little segment called what What the news News. so i found some strange news and some crazy things all around the place and i kind of like i said i go around the internet and uh, for those that are new and then uh they kind of make me say what the news because these are pretty strange and I'm surprised why our media doesn't talk about this stuff. But they're too busy keeping us mad at each other. That's why we got to get together, humans. Like I said. But anyways, what the news? <laughs> what the news? In Alabama, they say it's illegal to drive blindfolded. Well, that's good. Because uh, why the fuck would you want to drive blindfolded? Come on, humans. In Alabama? What the hell are you thinking? That's a great law. What the news? What the news? In Arizona, they say it's illegal to keep a donkey sleep, to allow a donkey to sleep in a bathtub. Yeah, just so you know, if you like are planning on moving to Arizona, all you people in California, leaving California and Texas getting too packed and y'all want to go to Arizona. Well, just make sure you don't let a donkey sleep in your bathtub because it's illegal. You're not allowed to do it. Apparently, a long time ago, I want to say like 1948 or something like that, there was a big flood. A levee broke in Arizona. It's dry ass. Well, I guess they had a fucking flood. And during that flood, a guy's fucking house got, part of his house got whooshed away and the donkey got swooshed away in the tub. And they rescued this donkey like miles down the road. I know what you're thinking, but this is a true story. This is how this law came about. I'm serious, humans. I would not steer you wrong. (laughs) So anyways, they got this donkey. They rescued him. And since that day forth, they made it illegal to let your donkey sleep in the bathtub in Arizona. And that was another. What the news? What the news? A new law in California. was well, not that new, but a law in California says it's illegal to whistle for your missing canaries before the hours of 7 a.m. Okay, then. I wish I could do that for a lot of people out here, like, doing things when I get to sleep in on a day off. I wish I could just tell you all to be like, just put a sign out there. This is the silence hour. That's pretty That's pretty clever. I like it. I wonder how many people would be whistling at whistling that time. Is the sun up at that time in California? I'm not sure. But what the news? What the news? In Connecticut, it is a law to make sure your pickle must bounce. Yes, people, your pickle must bounce. And get your mind out of the gutter, not that pickle. The actual ones you eat at the store in a jar. Okay? Those pickles. I guess some two gentlemen back in the day tried to uh, sell pickles that were not fit for human consumption. And these guys were telling these guys these are great pickles. And the leader, the owner of this town, I forget what they're called, there was like the mayor or somebody, was like, it must pass the pickle test. And the pickle test is, it must bounce at least twice. So now when you go to the store and buy your pickles, and you want to see if it's a good pickle, it should have a bounce. It's a long Connecticut. 
You should obey the laws, even if you're in Michigan. What the news? What the news? In Delaware, you are not allowed to sell dog hair or cat hair. I'm just saying. People in Delaware, if anybody in Delaware is watching, is there like a big black market of dog and cat hair? Like are people making like two pays out of dog hair and cat hair? Or like cat hair or cats needing like hair transplants now and like like uh, cat hair plugs and dog hair plugs. What's going on with that? Is there like some big fucking uh, big hustle going on that I don't know about? What the news, Delaware? What the news? In Iowa, it is illegal to throw a brick on the freeway. Well, good, Iowa. What the news? That's all I got. What the news? In Kentucky, a woman cannot marry the same man four times. You can do it three times. But not four times. Why would you want to go back three times for ladies out there? Three? And then you want to go for the fourth? You're going to have to leave a state to do it the fourth? Like that? Like it's going to be better the, that fourth quarter? Like you got four quarters of the game and this is it? And there's no OT? Do you guys got overtime after that? Do you call it the fifth time or do you call it overtime? If there's anybody out there that's been married over, over three times. Do you call it number five or is it called overtime? Like is it a fourth quarter of the game? Or are we talking about extra innings? That's what I need to know, humans. I need to know this. What the news? What the news, Michigan? This law in Michigan says you are not allowed to sell a vehicle on Sunday. This was due to religious purposes. So that goes to you, all you guys in the chop shops. Still can't buy a car on Sunday. I hope you guys honor it. What the news? What the news? In New Jersey, bulletproof vests are illegal during committing crimes. So all you crim- criminals out there in New Jersey, if you're going to do a crime or you're going to rob somebody, rob a store, rob a bank, rob a person, make sure you're not wearing a vest because the vest is illegal. The robbery might be not as illegal as wearing the vest That might make the crime more worse. What the news? I guess in Nebraska, you are not allowed to get married if you have a venereal disease. Thank you, Nebraska. That's great news. I never knew you had to get those kind of tests before you get married. That's genius. What the news? (laughs) <laughs> what the news in Tennessee it's illegal to share your Netflix password sorry Tennessee you gotta stop hooking your friends up they can trace you now because apparently people are getting a hacked out there from people just throwing passwords everywhere it was leaving it vulnerable to computer hackers so you must not do it cherish your passwords humans cherish them What the news? What the news? In New Mexico, they say that it's banned. They banned idiots from voting. What the news? (laughs) Well, if you guys enjoyed that episode, I would appreciate it if you hit me with a like and a subscription. And don't forget to turn on that notification button so you never miss an episode. I drop an episode every Wednesday and every Saturday. And like I said, this has been another episode of Meant to Vent. Till next time, humans. See ya. Thank <laughs> you.